Welcome back to this sixth and final session in the Introduction to Forest School course. In this video, we're going to try and weave all the threads together and think about how Forest School creates community and how we go about doing that. So our journey through the session so far started with an introduction and inviting you to reflect on your own childhood play memories. We then led you outside to experience nature for yourselves and to awaken your senses to it. We then unpicked the forest school definition and the six principles a bit and then you went outside again and experienced an example session flow and then in the last session we brainstormed the benefits to ourselves to other people and to the wider world that could come from forest school programs so now you have a solid foundation about the forest school ethos what it might look like and its benefits, we want to build on that to start exploring how Forest School might bring us into relationships uh, with nature, with ourselves, with other people and what that might look like and how that might work. So to do this, I invite you to return back to your natural space. Ideally, the same space that you used in session two and session four, so that you continue developing a connection Yay. with it. As with the previous sessions, if you've got a smartphone, then do take it with you with some headphones so you can listen to the activities straight from that. If not, have a listen through this video and take some notes out with you. I'd also invite you to bring a few bits and pieces with you this time if you can. So a notebook and pen or pencil would be handy. A bottle of water would be handy. A small offering of food of some sort. So a little bit of bread or a small pot of seeds or porridge oats, something like that. Um, and then a, a plastic bag and some gloves, if you've got them, like disposable gloves would, would do. So bring all those bits and pieces with you if you can. The session probably will take an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. Or it could be broken into smaller chunks if you've got less time. On the way to your space, we invite you to take your time, wander a little bit, explore and discover, see what takes your curiosity. If you want to revisit any of the activity ideas that we've done in previous sessions, then find space and time to, to do those. Hug a tree or two, <laughs> whatever takes your fancy before you settle into your space. So we'll see you once you get there. Forest School is a long-term process and we go out to the same space week after week after week. We get to know the plants and animals and each other as we see each other frequently. So as the months and seasons pass, we build stronger and stronger relationships with both the sites and nature, but also as a community of people out here as well. Forest School is also learner-led. So as time goes on, the leaders will stop leading the activities so much like we did in session four, where I led you through an example session flow. And the learners will start taking over based on their own curiosities and their own inclinations. And what I've noticed happen is that we start co-creating culture within Forest School. So what I mean by that is we start to have certain patterns of things that might take place which are based on these unique relationships between individuals and the natural world or individuals between each other and over time these patterns start becoming part of the session flow um, yeah and it could also link to past experiences of things that have happened in previous sessions as well. So I've had forest school groups where they create their own songs or poems that they then sing to the trees every time they leave the woodlands. 
I've also had an example of a teenage group where we found an old doormat lying around in the woodland site. And, yeah, an old doormat. And then they um, adopted this as a routine that they wiped their feet before they came in the woods and wiped their feet as they came out of the woods. So it became, it became part of the pattern of visiting the woodland. So now it's the third time that you've visited this space. I invite you just to take a moment to reflect are you forming any patterns out here? Are you creating your own culture of being in this space? So for example, when you walk here, do you follow the same route each time? Are there things on your journey that you pay particular attention to? Perhaps you've noticed a, a nest or a burrow or a shelter en route that you have to check out. Yeah, bubs. When you enter the space, are you forming any particular habits like saying hello to a particular tree or balancing on a certain trunk or maybe singing a little song? Maybe you take your shoes off and walk barefoot or explore a particular crevice in a stump. Um, so take your time, reflect, are you following certain patterns each time you come out here? and maybe jot any ideas that come to mind down in your notebook. And then I'd like you to take it a step further and reflect on how could you develop those patterns? How could you take it to the next step and consciously embrace those patterns? So we hope you've noticed various patterns that you've been creating out in the natural space. We'd love to hear any of them, so do let us know in the comment section below if you've noticed some habits forming. Um, just to tie this together, I want to just highlight about how this fits with forest school ethos. So I mentioned before how over time the learners will take over control of what happens at forest school and this relationship building between the group themselves, between individuals and the leader and individuals and the natural world, it's these relationships that help form that learner-led direction of activities. So these patterns or habits that might come up start becoming part of the flow of the forest school session or part of the routine so as forest school leaders we have to be open to allow that to happen although i do say it would be co-created so co-created as in the leader might gently steer some of it or through the activities that they suggested earlier on in the program um, that might give some direction. So for example, using gratitude practices, for example, models having gratitude for the space out here, and that might then get taken further by individuals and their relationships. It's through these connections and patterns that every forest school program becomes its own unique thing. It has its own life force if you like so no two forest school programs are ever the same because every forest school is made up of a group of unique individuals that will form unique relationships with that space and with each other so that's why i love forest school it's brilliant because no two sessions no two programs are ever the same Something I've noticed over time at Forest School is the stronger these relationships are between the learners and the natural space, then the more likely, yeah, the more likely um, the individuals are wanting to care for the site quite naturally without having to be told to help care for it. It just happens through them desiring to do it. 
Um, so what might happen towards the later stages of a forest school is the learners might want to join in with activities that help the conservation and the ecology of the site. So for example, they might want Ooh. to yeah, help clear away uh, invasive non-native species like Himalayan balsam or something like that. They might want to help plant trees or other species if that's appropriate for the site. They might want to clear away any litter if they see it. They might want to help coppice the trees and lots of other kind of conservation type tasks. And so I feel that caring for the site is a big part of forest school and it's a part of the reciprocalness of the relationship between people and nature. So with that said, we thought we'd offer you the opportunity to do that for your site. So you've been going to your site three, this is the third time now in this series. So we hope that you're feeling a connection and a desire to care for your site. So what I'd like you to do is maybe just take a moment, you might want to wander a little bit through your site and just think and feel, is there anything that you can do to help your site today. Um, I sometimes actually ask the site in my head, <laughs> just saying, you know, can I be of service to you today? Is there anything you might like me to help you with? So for example, there might be some litter that you could help pick up if you've brought a bag and gloves. Um, obviously try to only handle safe litter. If there's anything too dodgy, don't handle it. Um, maybe you can collect some of that and tidy the space. Mm. Um, maybe there is um, some invasive non-native species that you recognize like Himalayan balsam or Japanese knotweed that you could again bag up, use the gloves, um, maybe take a little bit away um, to help the natural ecology. I've just noticed I've got a gift from the uh, beech tree I walked under. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> maybe there's other things that you notice. Maybe there's an old rope tied round a branch of a tree that's cutting into the bark and um, causing a problem there that you could try and remove. Um, maybe if you brought a bottle of water out, maybe you see a very poorly dried out plant that you could give a little bit of drink to. Whatever it is, in whatever way you can offer your service to your space. So hopefully you've spent some time offering your service to your space and caring for your site in a reciprocal way. Um, if you did bag up any litter or invasive species, do make sure that you can dispose of them properly and put them in a bin somewhere. So we'd now like to invite you to spend some time in your sit spot. So that special place that you have out here where you can kind of chill out tune in, breathe and connect with nature. Ideally, if you can go back to the same sit spot as you visited in the previous sessions, that would be great. If not, find another appropriate place that you feel comfortable in. So go to your sit spot, take in some deep breaths and just take a moment. <laughs> yeah, take a moment to be. If you'd like to do any of the sensory activation exercises that we did in session two, then mm. feel free to do those like the owl eyes and the deer ears and the squirrel touch and just, you know, bring your senses alive mm. and connect to this space. So take as long as you want to feel connected. you've had some time to tune in and awaken your senses out here I'd like you to stay in your sit spot and I'd invite you to reflect on where do you want to go from here so reflect on your next steps and intentions about forest school or possibly nature connection in general and if you've got your notebook and pen with you, perhaps you'd like to jot down some ideas. Maybe they're 
fully formed thoughts, sentences, words, uh, draw pictures, whatever comes to mind, however you want to represent it. But maybe try to be as specific and as detailed as possible um, and maybe try to think of three. So one maybe in the short term, in the immediate future, one in the mid term and maybe one in the long term. So the short term one might be something simple that you're going to do this week, like go to visit your sit spots at least a couple of times. Yeah. Or maybe look on the internet and see if there's um, forest school leaders near you. So something you can do this week. Then maybe the midterm one is something that you'll do within the next six months. So maybe it's to read a particular book about Forest School or maybe the Richard Louvre book, Last Child in the Woods. Uh, and then the long term one, maybe something that you're going to do in the next year or something like that. So maybe that's to sign up to a proper Forest School course, maybe if that's the direction you want to go in. Or maybe it's to start volunteering at a Forest School or maybe it's to make sure you go and explore a new wild place every month. Uh, it could be, could be anything, whatever's right for you. But I just invite you to write down those three intentions so that you've got something to work towards coming out of this series. So I'm going to continue, but there's a lovely row doe just to our right. So we're whispering to try not to disturb her grazing because she knows we're there. She's watching us but she's decided to continue to graze, so we don't want to scare her too much. So hopefully you've had some time to reflect and come up with some intentions for your next steps after this series. I'd like to now invite you to cast those intentions out to the winds and the universe. So to do this, you need to find yourself a stick, ideally one that's about arm length, and what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to write your intention in the air. So you could do that going round in a circle on the spot if you would like. So just write your intention as if it was a sentence and just keep spinning round, casting your sentence, your intention, casting it out to the wider world via the four winds, casting it to all directions so that that intention or intentions are out there now, they're out in the universe and hopefully they will come to pass. So now we've cast our intentions out to the universe, we're nearing the end of our time out here. But before we go, I wanted to offer you the thought to exchange gifts with this natural space so that you can remember your time out here. So maybe starting off in your sit spot, take a moment, close your eyes, breathe deeply and know that there's something in this space, there's something out here that the natural space wants to offer to you. Yeah, there's a gift out here. It will be something quite small, a natural item, quite small. It should fit in your hand or your pocket. It could be any shape or texture. And it's out here waiting for you. So just take a moment to breathe deeply and see if you feel any sensations in your body that will lead you in a particular direction to a particular natural item. And if you then get a sense that that natural item is being offered to you, I invite you to do a swap of gifts. So if you've brought out a little food offering of some sort, maybe a little bit of bread or some oats or some seeds, um, or if you haven't got that, maybe even just a little, little splash of water, which the plants will enjoy. Um, where you take that natural gift from, just leave the offering of food or water there 
so that there's a reciprocal yeah a reciprocal relationship with the space so that we're giving back what we receive So now you've exchanged gifts with your natural space, keep that item safe, whatever it is. Perhaps put it in a special place when you get home so that it will be there as a aid to memory about how it feels to be out here in this space. Or maybe you might like to keep it in a coat pocket or something like a touchstone so that it's to hand to feel and to remind you of being in nature. So we've now come to the end of our time out here today and also to the end of the series of this introduction to Forest School Course. So thank you ever so much for joining us through these six sessions. We hope it's been useful to you and that it's given you a stronger understanding of the Forest School ethos. We also hope that it might have encouraged more personal connection with the natural world as well. So as you leave your natural space, take your time, explore any curiosities, do any of the activities that we've done in the past sessions and make sure you share some gratitude with it as you leave. Maybe you want to hug the tree or just send some thoughts of gratitude out there to the space. And we hope you'll have many, many adventures in the woods and wild places in the future. Thanks for watching. Say bye, pups. Bye, pups. Forest School is a groovy thing. Connection, community, benefits it brings. Playing in nature is the key. So step out to the woods and head to the trees. <laughs> Mm-hmm.